Section 540, subsection 2 of the Liverpool Corporation Act 1921, be exercised to the Minister of Housing and Local Government for consent to the borrowing by the Council of the sum of £80,000 to be repaid on the Fire Services Committee be requested to report on the progress which has been made in the enforcement. Three quarters of a million people live and work in Liverpool. The boundaries of the city encompass an area of 43 square miles. The rateable value of the city is nearly 27 million pounds. The city's total annual income is nearly 70 million pounds, of which about 20 million pounds comes from the rates. Twenty million pounds to get your dustbins emptied, to pay for traffic control, to borrow a library book. Twenty million pounds for help in times of difficulty. For the services of a fire brigade. an ambulance. Twenty million pounds for this. We regard school as a society for children in which we endeavour to provide for their needs in the fullest possible way. Education at all stages concerns the whole child and involves all aspects of his life. As teachers, we fully understand that learning must be a pleasurable experience and that our children must have freedom to explore the school environment and to make worthwhile contacts with other children in the department. If only schooling were just a matter of paper and ink and exercise books. If only it were simply money allocated to heat and light and teachers' salaries. Then it could be measured in pounds and shillings and pence. But who will measure the value of a child or put a price on the dedication of those who teach him? Simon, I'm at the present studying radar, marine radar. I've completed a, a course in radio telegraphy, which is run by the post office. We have to pass a certain standard. This pass standard I've 
achieved. And uh, as I say, I, I am now studying for the radar maintenance exam. We have uh, excellent facilities, uh, the most modern radar equipment and uh, marine radio equipment. It's all of extremely good quality and uh, none of them, none, none of its museum piece stuff. It all works and uh, as I say, it's 100% functional. If only a man's vocation were a matter of the equipment needed to train him, then it could be measured by computers, recorded by clerks, tallied in ledgers, balanced by columns, presented by accountants as profit or loss. But who will measure a man's vocation? Who dare set limits to a man's life, his dignity, his claim to a wife and children, his right to make a home, his stake in the future? 20 million pounds. How many young men does that add up to? One of the difficulties that faces a medical officer of health in a large city and port like Liverpool is that he is involved in so many activities and involved very closely with so many departments. I have to have on my departmental staff a number of medical officers who work on a rotor system of 24 hours duty because the Mersey River is navigable 24 hours in the day and shipping is on the move all day and all night and for this reason medical officers have got to be available to board ships in the river check the ship's papers check any sickness on board and to be able to give a clearance to that ship before it can either dock or before it can go further to somewhere where people can have contact with it. A ring, a ring of roses, a pocket full of poses, a tissue, a tissue. We all fall down, a nursery rhyme, a folklore memory. Sneeze, a tissue, fall down to wait for death. 20 million pounds a year to keep at bay the terror of plague, the Black Death. 20 million pounds to buy the heritage of Jenna, of Pasteur, of Curie, of Fleming. 20 million pounds for the skill of a doctor. Cheap at the price? In the year 1900, a baby born in Liverpool had only three quarters of a chance of surviving to its first birthday. In other words, 250 babies in every thousand died before reaching their first birthday. Last year, only 20 died. And this is largely due to the high efficiency of our health visiting service. These health visitors visit not only babies, but families and advise them on their health problems. They started off by advising on infant feeding and baby care, but they now also advise on many other things, but particularly how to look after grandpa or grandma. One of these respects, one of the most satisfactory of my services is a very simple service, and it's the chiropody service for old people. Because as you get older, you find it more and more difficult to take care of your feet. And often whenever their feet have been doctored up and uh, made more comfortable, they then decide that they might go and take a look at the old folks club, or they might even go to the cinema, or they might even go and have a pint on the way home. Let me just mention the ambulance service because here is one that is most important. It transports some 5,000 people every day to and from hospital, and it provides a great relief to the hospital bed because many patients who normally would be in hospital are not in hospital, they're at home, and they come in to see the doctor or for their treatment, and this is a very great boon indeed. 
Some of them don't even need to go to hospital, and my district nurses look after them. Others need something to take up their minds in their long, sometimes bedridden existence, and our occupational therapists do that. All this is built up, as far as I'm concerned, is to make everybody in the Liverpool city self-sufficient, to let them be able to develop their capabilities in the way that they can within the limits of their capabilities, and for us to provide good health services for them to do this. The problems of a city are the problems of those who run it. Their job is to see the problems, to understand the problems, and to work towards a human and sympathetic solution. Our slum clearance will provide infinitely better living conditions than the people have ever had before because we are struggling hard to give them open space. Uh, proper school facilities, school open space. And incidentally, I may say that we are already pulling down some of our first corporation dwellings because they are worn out. We've come completely full circle. And so the whole thing is a human problem. And that's the angle on which we're, we're tackling the thing. We're trying to reduce it or get it beyond the sort of statistics, brick and mortar thing. Bricks, mortar, cement, concrete. The old down, the new up. Houses, factories. But industry is only as good as its management. And when you're expanding, you've got to get the right kind of executive. Nature's endowed us with a variety of countryside around this district. Um, to the north, we have the, the lakes. South, we've got Snowdonia and Wales. The east, we have the uh, Peak District and uh, Yorkshire Moors, the Bronte Country. Now, some may say that this hasn't got any significance for industry. Natural amenities like this, I believe, are a useful factor when you're attracting in people of, um, of ability and, and perception into your factories. Of course, the the original idea of us going into Wales was to obtain water for the vast needs of a large conurbation such as Merseyside. Um, to do this, required, it required vast planning and foresight on behalf of the Liverpool Corporation officials who are, and we make no bones about this, on a par with their contemporaries in industry. Water to a city where, for hundreds of years, ships have sailed upon the Mersey. Today, the river provides a landmark for arrival at the city airport. The city council firmly believes in the value of an airport to serve the surrounding region. This is why they have already spent uh, something over three million pounds on developing what is probably, apart from its length, the finest runway in Europe. We are striving very hard to open up new routes from Liverpool Airport, uh, particularly to the continent of Europe, and with the new runway we have, in fact, the facility to take such an aircraft as a BC-10 at full weight, right transatlantically.
In so many ways, Liverpool is a unique city. And the far-sighted plans of successive city councils have always kept it ahead in thought and in action. Typical is the development that is taking place in the city centre under the guidance of the city planning officer and his staff. Planning concerns everybody. I think uh, one of the most important elements in any planning exercise is to take the public with you. People who want to build houses, who want to um, convert a shop, um, various activities of this kind, which are the normal <coughs> life of a city. It is our job to see that uh, whatever happens in terms of physical development in the city fits into an overall pattern which will be of uh, maximum benefit to the citizens and of course to the economy of the city as well. The object of the corporation for the future of the city is clear. It is to provide an even better city. A city in which citizen and visitor alike will find visual pleasure, colour, activity and recreation. The plan which for hundreds of years has made Liverpool the city where people look after people. I do resent the rape. They're too much and we don't see anything for them until I had the baby and we had sister. I mean, you see the patient right from the beginning and you go right through the delivery and nurse her till the very end. I'm quite happy being employed by the corporation. I mean, everybody is employed by somebody and everybody's doing a job of work. So it doesn't matter whether it's a bus driver or um, the bin men, the nurses, they've all got to be employed and they've all got to do their jobs. And I don't think of her as being employed by the corporation. I think of her as being um, of a midwife, you know, um, something quite separate. As she's been a friend apart from just the midwife. She's become a friend to me, and I, I've had lots of things to ask her. Every day I've had things to ask, and I've waited for her to come. And she's always had the time. She's never rushed. She's always listened to me and told me what I wanted to know, and reassured me. And, uh, you know, that I didn't have something sort of a superhuman baby. It was just an ordinary baby, and there was nothing to worry about. And she's never had to rush out or rush away. She's always listened to me, and that means a lot. I had, I had a nurse and I had a sister all to myself. And a council employee into the bargain, which I didn't think about at the time. <laughs> 20 million pounds. The price of a mother. The value of a child. 